In this second phenols video, I'm picking up the reactions of phenols at the reaction of phenol with bromine. I'm then going to go on to compare the reactivity of phenol and bromine to that of benzene and bromine and explain the difference and then finish up with some uses of phenols. So we'll move on to the reaction of phenol with bromine now. You can see I've written it up there on the board. I've shown a sort of more displayed type formula for the phenol. You can see why when you look at the product there. So just have a look at that and what we're going to do after this slide is compare the reaction, this reaction, um, to the reaction of benzene with bromine. So a couple of things to point out about this reaction. This reaction takes place at room temperature and pressure and it does not require a halogen carrier catalyst. So because this bromine is reacting, then it's going to be decolorized. So that's one of the observations. And the other observation is this product, which I'll name in a second, is seen as a white precipitate. So we'll go on to naming the product now. So remember, we said this a few slides ago, um, the OH group makes this carbon number one. So that means that's carbon number two, three, four, five, six. So this is called two, four, six, tribromo, because there's three bromines on this. So two, four, six, tribromophenol. In terms of reaction type, well, we've got hydrogens were on here and they've been replaced with this bromine so that's obviously a substitution reaction. The bromine is actually acting as an electrophile in this reaction and so it's electrophilic substitution. And remember please only one L there. So we'll look at why there's this difference in the reaction between phenol and bromine and benzene and bromine. And that subtle difference is that the reaction with phenol and bromine doesn't need the halogen carrier catalyst, but benzene does. So why is that? Well, it's got to have something to do with that OH group, hasn't it? That's the only difference between phenol and benzene. So the OH group must be doing something to increase the reactivity of phenol. So what could that something be? Well, if you remember, the oxygen has two lone pairs sitting on it. I'll just show them now. They're sitting in P orbitals. And what happens is one of the lone pairs becomes delocalized. So I'm just going to show that by this pair of electrons sort of moving down. And it becomes delocalized and becomes part of this pi electron cloud and so effectively you are increasing the electron density of this delocalized electron cloud so instead of there being six electrons in there there are now eight so obviously makes it more um, electron rich what can it do to this bromine molecule which is non-polar naturally non-polar it's going to repel the electron pair in this bond slightly towards this end so this becomes slightly negative this end becomes slightly positive and then a pair of electrons can come out from the delocalized electron cloud and the reaction can take place whereas the electron density in the benzene molecule there's not enough electron density in there to polarize this molecule and so this remains non-polar and you can't get any interaction between the two. I'll just quickly show you this explanation of it. I'm using Kekulé's structure here and this will hopefully explain why we get the two, four, six positions featuring in the structure of the product. So again, the pair of electrons, one of the lone pairs is delocalized 
and get closer to this pair of electrons here and what will it do? It will repel them and it will repel them onto that so the corner there and the knock-on effect of that is it will repel these electrons here onto this position and because there's electron density getting closer to this it will repel those onto there and so you get this activation it's known as of the electron density at these positions here well what positions is that? That's one we'll count around this way two, three, four, five, six so I've tried to summarize it there in those three key points so the first key point the lone pair or a lone pair on the oxygen atom becomes delocalized into the pi electron cloud key point number two the electron density of the benzene ring has been increased remember there's now eight electrons in there as opposed to six and you saw before that it's actually at positions two four six where the ring is activated and the third key point the um, benzene ring now on the phenol is able to polarize the bromine molecule because of this by itself so it doesn't need the help of the halogen carrier catalyst and we'll just finish with some uses of phenols so I've written four uses there so the first one antiseptics so any of you interested in medicine you may be interested to know that in 1870 Joseph Lister used carbolic acid which is the old name for phenol so he pioneered the use of that as an antiseptic in operations and so before that obviously the risk of operation was a lot higher because there weren't any antiseptics they're used in detergents they're used in lots of pharmaceuticals so you'll see phenols um, being used to make a lot of drugs a lot of medicines and they're also used in dyes and there's a separate topic all about something called azo dyes that we need to study as part of the A2 syllabus and so you'll see phenols again when we look at those.